Hey guys, your boy Jacob here, starting another project. As you can see, we had a quite a bit of snow which held me off for a minute, but I'm gonna be starting on this uh, ADA access ramp and I'm really excited to get into it today. We're on a pretty busy corner here, which is sort of annoying, but not a big deal. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna lay out a nice four to five foot flat area here the ramp is going to go down, there's going to be a five by eight foot landing out there, and then it's going to come down again here. We're also extending and building a new stairway right here. So these things are all going to meet in this area. I'm going to be pouring some new concrete, and that's what we got going on. So setting these footings is a pretty important process. What I like to do is get footings that are going to be attached to the same beam level with each other. You don't need to, you'll just have a different post size. These are 20 inch deep sauna tube forms. They are 12 inch diameter. So what I'm doing is leveling these to each other, making sure that each form itself is level in all directions. And so this whole area is ready. So let me give you a little example of how I'm gonna level the tops of these forms over here. I've got my laser level out and I've got my receiver here what I've done is dug these so that they're at a depth that I'm comfortable with. I'm going to be shaving a little off of some of these, but I've gotten them pretty close. You're going to want to level the tops of these out first. And then what I've done is come around here and I've got some marks set up to figure out exactly where I want the top of my beam. And this allows me to mark a line where I'll go back and cut that piece off. And this is going to sit just like this. Earlier in the day, of course, I got these two poured, had them covered up because there was a little bit of rain, but those are pretty much set. I'm gonna put plastic on these, but I just got all four poured. Uh, this is probably the wettest one. These are setting up nice. I like having the nut on there because uh, sometimes you need to pound it just a little bit with the hammer. Um, but these are gonna set all night and I'll start putting on my beams tomorrow. All right guys, not a bad first day. Everything's all cleaned up. We're looking good. I think the uh, snow's melting. It's supposed to really, really rain tomorrow. So I'm not sure what I'll be able to get done. But this is day one. Uh, it, this is gonna be a Ipe hardwood deck, obviously with a ramp. There are disabled people in this house and it is gonna be a home tattoo shop, so they need this access. We're gonna be pouring some concrete over here later. Pretty exciting job. Sweet. Hey guys, your boy Jacob here, good afternoon. Um, I couldn't film all day because it was pouring down rain, but I decided to just work through it. And now I'm really wet, but I got a bunch done. So I dove into this zone and I got it framed. Um, the stairway is gonna come off of here. Uh, the ramp is gonna begin over here. That's about a 12 foot gap there. So it's gonna run 12 feet and drop a little less than a foot and then run another 12 feet here. It's gonna terminate right where this one starts. Um, and that's kind of why I gotta pour some concrete in here to give it a good place to land. And then as well, I gotta pour concrete right where this bush is to create a landing for the stairs. So the first thing I did was complete this pad. There's a couple unique things about this. Uh, usually you'd put a beam and then frame on top of that, but what I decided to do was inset all of the And that's because if I had done it the other way around, these footings would have been below grade, especially up in that top corner, and you don't want your beams just sitting, getting wet. So this was kind of the only option. Another abnormal thing that I did was I stopped this beam inside of the end of my platform that I wanted. So I stopped it at four and this ends up being five feet. And I did that, it's quite a bit of extra work because I didn't want the footings to be revealed from this side. This is the street side. I want this side to look good. So there's a lot of extra work and time and a little bit of extra material to get that, but that's the type of thing that I try to think about every time I'm building. Good morning guys, it's your boy Jacob here. Just a whole nother day, it's my birthday today. And it's not raining, so that's nice. I'm doing a bunch of digging, trying to lay out the form work for this concrete I'm gonna pour today. Wanna get it poured today so they can dry for two or three days over the weekend. So where our first ramp comes in, we need something that's generally level. 
it's gonna have to slope this way because that's the way the drainage is gonna work and that's how this existing concrete works. The only thing I'm concerned about is the places where I need to overlap new concrete over this because the thinner that concrete gets, the weaker it gets. So I'm not sure if this is all gonna take hold. I've uh, talked with the client. You know, this is kind of just a patchwork job. So we're all ready to pour here. Put down some plastic just to make sure that doesn't soak up a bunch of the wetness from the clay. Forming turned out nice. I think this is, you know, the best option for what we have. Ideally, and if you had a lot more money, you would remove this whole walkway and just re-pour a brand new thing. But uh, that's kind of not in the budget for this one. So we're going to do our best here. So just finished getting this first part poured and I got it all floated out. You can see some of those marks, but this thing needs to cure up a little bit. This part right here, this is gonna be exposed, but almost 100% of this is gonna be covered. You can see where I've got a 90 here. That's gonna be the end of the actual ramp. And then my metal transition is gonna go in this way a little bit. So this over here is really the only part that's gonna be visible. So it did start raining, so I had to cover this up. That's been covered up for a while and I just got the rest of this board. Now you'll notice that I'm not going to the top of my form because that's not how I formed this out. This is a pretty quick little shape, um, but I did a pretty good job floating everything. You know, a crack like this, you can't ever expect concrete to hold up into there. So I just ran it until, you know, it was three inches deep. I think that'll hold up a little while. As for the rest of this stuff, Right there, it's about an inch and a half thick, and that's not the type of thing that you would expect to stay there forever, but because our transition and our framing is gonna cover that, I do think that'll hold up the structure and it'll be less likely to chip it. So here's what it looks like right now. This stuff cured up really nice. It's kind of dirty because I've been working around through here. This once again is one of the only revealed spots here. We'll see that in a minute once I get the rest of the ramp built, but you know, it's prettier than the existing stuff. I wouldn't claim this to be like really good concrete work, but the plan here is actually to put some nice quarter minus gravel over all this. So this morning I got all of my hangers set up on here. I really like using the concealed hangers, at least in this instance, because I can drive them straight in through the back. And it also allows me to set them at a consistent height and then I'm cutting a, a little seat cut in all of these. So I know that for sure my top face is going to be super flush with the next level of framing. And that's really important because uh, your lumber does vary in the width. So uh, when you're measuring down from the top and making that seat cut, you just know for sure that everything's gonna line up. I wanna show you how I scribe these to meet the ground. So what I do is I've got this propped up so that the bottom run of that board is hitting. And then I've cut it to length, and I've got the bottom hitting where I want it to as well, obviously on the ground. And then what I'm gonna do is use a chunk of two by six, it's the same width as this, and just mark along, and I'll show you that. So since we know that this whole piece is gonna drop down the exact width of the board, we can take a similar board and come here and lay it on the surface that we're trying to match and just make marks. You gotta make sure your surface is clean and there's nothing holding it up. But this is essentially what I do and I mean, it works absolutely perfectly every time. So I just got all of my joists set up. I've wrapped these in petroleum gasket tape. I'll wrap from the top again so that it's fully sealed because you don't want water coming up into that even though it's pressure treated, ground contact, lumber. And these are nice and flush. So pretty happy with that setup. I'm gonna work on getting these posts set because it's not raining today somehow. And uh, after that, I'll just be picking up material. So I've got my posts tagged up here just with a couple of screws so they're all level. What I'm gonna do next is bore out my holes and I'm gonna put these DTT2Z hold downs on these. Um, something of note here, I wanted to put blocking on all these stretches and a really smart thing to do is just line up your blocks where you're gonna be uh, putting these hold downs because you already need a block here for that to fasten to. So anyways, just thinking smart and trying to be ahead of yourself. 
I now have my two DTT2Z hold downs installed in these two middle posts. And now at least by the Portland deck code book, as long as you have four approved fastenings in these posts that reach a corner, which I do, uh, they gotta be a minimum 3 8 lag. Uh, those are good there. So not as many of those hold downs as uh, usual. All right, so it turned into a real soaker actually. Uh, luckily I just went and got all of my e-paid decking. And uh, this is sort of the scene right now. I have yet to frame the stairway. I am considering putting in a new post where that stairway ends, but this thing is looking really good. All right, here we are on day five. I just laid down the first parts of the decking. I wanted to get this front door area set up, and this is just tacked down with two screws, getting all my spacing right, so that I can start working my way down here. And the idea is to give yourself access later. Maybe we can get a close up here of how beautiful this wood is. It's just perfectly clear. Which that's one thing, you know, with the softwoods, dug fir, lumber, cedar deck boards, you're never working with clear material. And not only that, this stuff, it, it smells like black walnut when you cut it. And it's just, it's beautiful. So I've gotten quite a bit done here. I got a little bit sick of doing these short pieces. So I went onto this deck, which was pretty easy. I just hung it off the end and then I ended up skill sawing the ends off because uh, it's a tiny bit shorter than my decking. Now down here where the transition is, what I do is I put half inch treated plywood, which runs just below the decking. And then I do eighth inch aluminum sheet. So that half inch, um, fly will go to here 18 inches and then my sheet is usually 24 and I found that that just works out perfect and it comes up nice and flush all of this stuff is going to get concrete anchored into here so it'll sit down really nice and uh, it won't move so we're ending the day here with a little bit of rain and I didn't take much video honestly because it's, uh, it's a bit of a hassle but I got this whole thing decked um, a couple things to note I've only got a couple screws in each of these boards and it's just enough to keep them straight. And so I'll spend quite a few hours coming around and screwing everything. And I did get into a little bit of the fascia. All right guys, it's nice and early. I got an early start today because it's supposed to be sunny. It hasn't been sunny. I haven't worked in the sun for like a few months. So pretty excited. What I've done is snapped out my line. I'm gonna cut the tops off all these posts. So I just got the top cap set on here. This is two by six uh, cedar tight knot. It is the Elite Series. This is a pretty nice piece of cedar for right now. And I like to do these rounded corners, especially where we're gonna have some traffic coming around through here. And so this is pretty much set up. That'll get stained and then it will also get resin epoxy on top. Now I'm about to screw down these stairs. I've just got the top faces on. One important thing, I frame these so that the framing itself is 11 and that ends up being a perfect board. This one gets covered up and overlapped. And then when you face it on, it ends up being about 12 in the end. And I've done them where the framing was 12 and you end up having to put a strip in the back. So this is just a little, it's a little tip for you. Got my sweatshirt off for the first time since early October. Really excited about the weather right now. I just got all the screws put into the decking. So what I need to do now is sand down everything, all my marks and any uh, roughness from screwing them in. 
So I'm taking advantage of the sun today and the fact that it's dry to get all of this cedar stained. Now this may look a little bit dark, but once I put the Ipe oil on the Ipe, it really darkens up and it really turns red. So this color difference is gonna come right together. Done it several times and this should look really, really nice. Okay, so my surface has all been cleaned. Let's see how close we get with this. Now watch, this stuff really changes color once you get the Ipe oil on. To me, it turns like cherry red. Um, there's a little bit of pigment in here, but for the most part, it's just uh, Ipe oil, and there's some UV protection in it, and uh, some other stuff that protects the wood. But man, this is such a good look. And that's the reason why you really gotta do something to the cedar because otherwise it's so much lighter that it just ends up looking pretty odd. Just got it all oiled and I think you can see now what I was talking about. This stuff oils up just like a cherry red color. It's obviously a little bit warm like a browner color but depending on how wet it is. Whew. I've now got the ends of the transition. Uh, wrapped in gasket tape and I've got my treated plywood here I already cut this so this is how this is gonna work that's gonna go right on there this is just tape I'm gonna concrete fastener this down so that it sticks to the ground because it is a little bit uneven and then my metal is gonna come all the way out here and that'll also get uh, stuck to the concrete, so this thing's going to turn out nice and smooth. So I got uh, about eight Tapcons in there into the concrete sucked down just like that. There's a slight curve, which is for drainage, but the way that I formed with this was to make this a lot easier. So the metal, I believe, will also bend just as easily and meet right up with the ground there. What an epic day. I got so much done. It's about sunset right now, so we went late. I've got a few pieces I need to finish up in here, and then uh, I ended up getting quite a bit of this fascia done. I do need some more Ipe boards but that's usually how it works. I usually end up going to get in about three or four more because they don't let you do returns. So you definitely don't want to buy too much. It's super expensive. Um, so this is uh, just about perfect. Back in the rain today, but fortunately I just got this whole stairway taken care of and I got the fascia on the rest of the deck. So that's how it looks. I'm gonna have to wait until it's not raining to put oil. So some of the pieces look a little bit off. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is jump into this uh, tensile wire. I also got the metal transition set down. I'll wait till it's dry as well to put the grip tape on that, but that turned out just perfect. So I had a little bit of extra Ipe, and what I did was face pieces on the underside of the railing like that. I think that beefs it up, and it gives that a little bit more support through there so it never wants to sag. And now I'm jumping into the tensile wire. This is just about everything I need. I've got eighth inch stainless steel wire. Um, I've got more than enough of my hardware, some big old wire snips. And what I did was mark out a little storyboard and put that up against each of my posts and align it the same way every time. And then I just run a little eighth inch uh, drill into there and that starts all of my holes. What an absolute suck fest. It was so nice with it being sunny yesterday. I'm getting a ton done. I'm getting really close to being done with this deck actually, but it's just been raining, so I haven't been able to video anything. So these connections get crimped, and this is a eighth inch crimper. Um, it takes quite a bit of force but I suppose I've never shown this part. You know, you gotta go till that clamp gets about 16th apart. Ugh. 
Honestly, I get sore from doing this because you have to hit it so hard. Well, it was a terrible, horrible nightmare doing this, but I got the handrail in. I'm not 100% happy with it, even though it is completely functional. It's a couple things, and this is interesting. I had not predicted that coming around this corner and going up the next angle, it's a pretty complicated compound miter cut there, but it brought the height of my rail up a lot closer to this than I really wanted. And that's uh, something I didn't really think about. So I think what I'm gonna do, you can grip in here, it's fine. But I think I might skill saw this top plate back a little bit. Good morning guys, it's the uh, final day on this job. Um, I decided to do the right thing. I bought a new piece of hand railing and I'm gonna completely rework this area because I was not happy at all with the way it turned out. And I wanna provide them the best access and the easiest access possible for getting in and out of their home. So what happened here, and this is maybe a good tip, is that this point here, obviously this is the height I want, but after you get to this point, you continue going up. And so it sets you on this track where you're rising a good inch here before you make that return. And then you're starting your whole next run an inch too high. And so what I'm gonna do is actually cut this here, return it to the post, and I'm gonna start that other run completely over and drop it down. Out here in the pouring rain, I got my chop saw out really quick, set it up, took down what I had here and fully redid it. And this is a good lesson because, you know, something unexpected happened. And rather than cutting into that top plate and doing some weird stuff, I just completely rebuilt it. I bought new material and I feel so much better now doing it right. All right, I'm back at this job one last time. I'm just gonna really quickly stain these handrails, which are the raw color right now. And I'm also gonna put resin epoxy on top of the top cap. And I do have to let the railing dry because that epoxy won't stick to an oil-based stain. So I'm gonna come back again and put epoxy on the rails because I want that stuff protected and I don't want it twisting and uh, changing over time. All right, so as you can see, I had had some unoiled pieces of the fascia, especially on the stairs, those lower pieces, I got those all oiled, including this fascia out here. Probably a bit hard to see because it's so bright. And then I went in and I stained this handrail, getting all of the surfaces, including the bottom. And that's gonna set up and dry today and really soak into the wood. And this is a pretty rough surface, so when I go into putting the epoxy tomorrow, it should set up really nice. I've begun putting in one of the final touches to this, which is the grip tape on this ramp. Obviously this could get really slick. It's not slick in the rain, to be honest, but it, it's gonna ice up and all that, so you gotta put some grip on here. I put in the first layer, and uh, this stuff is rated for exterior use, so it's you know made for this purpose. And uh, I usually do four rows, so there'll be about an inch and a half, two inches between each row. And we're all squared away with this now, which means we're pretty much done with the deck. It's just coming back tomorrow and putting resin epoxy on some of these handle surfaces. And after that, man, this thing turned out super, super nice. Very cool job to work on. Got to use all of my skills. I believe, you know, uh, some creative solutions in some of the different areas, including the existing concrete stairway and the existing concrete I think all the solutions I came up with not only fit the budget of the client, but it made the project happen. And they had gotten bids from other people that were just really high. And I like to make things possible for people. So we found that middle ground. Um, here's some shots with the epoxy on there. That always makes a really good finish for any surface you're going to be touching a lot. Anyways, uh, we'll see you on the next one. Um, going to be starting a big series. I'm building the whole house. So uh, we'll start getting into that in a little bit. See ya.